Does your child breaking out in a rash when they're sick send you down a Google rabbit hole? I'm Dr. Mona Amin, a board certified pediatrician and mom, and we're discussing viral rashes, something called viral exanthems, why they happen, and two common viruses, fifth disease and sixth disease, that causes these rashes in kids. Let's get to it. As a pediatrician, I constantly get worried parents or friends showing me rashes on their child. There are many reasons a child can get a rash, ranging from infections, including bacteria and viruses, allergic reactions, eczema, heat, insect bites, drug reactions, autoimmune conditions, irritation, and sometimes idiopathic, which means we don't know why they got the rash. That's a fun reason, right? In this video, we're talking about viral rashes, namely what a viral exanthem is, and also common childhood viruses that cause rashes. Fifth disease, or slap cheek or parvovirus B19, and sixth disease, or roseola. A part two of this viral rash series will include measles and chickenpox, which thankfully we have vaccines for. But with the anti-vaccine movement, it's important to know what these look like. A viral exanthem is a rash that appears on the skin due to a virus. Many viruses cause rashes, especially in children. When your child gets sick with a virus, their body is fighting back by using its immune system, and the rash is the body's way of reacting to the infection. Remember, the skin is our largest organ, and sometimes it can respond with a rash. Some viral exanthems are very classic to the virus, such as measles, mumps, fifth disease, and sixth disease. But sometimes we may not know what virus it is, but know that the rash seems viral because the child has other viral symptoms. Sometimes with other viruses, a viral exanthem rash can appear one way in one child and another way in another. Like with COVID-19, some kids will get a viral exanthem rash and some won't. So we look at the whole exam, listen to the whole history of presentation and symptoms to make a diagnosis. Viral exanthem rashes are widespread rashes that can vary in appearance such as spots, bumps, or red patches. They can be localized to one part of the body or diffuse. In a viral exanthem, the rash is usually one of the symptoms of a viral infection and often appears alongside other signs, such as fever, cough, or runny nose. Most viral exanthems are self-limiting, meaning they resolve on their own as the viral infection runs its course. Treatment generally focuses on managing symptoms such as fever and itching. Hives deserve their own video on my channel, and if you would like a video on hives, comment below. Hives typically appear as raised red or pink bumps or plaques on the skin. They may have a pale center with a red inflamed border. The welts can vary in size from small dots to large patches, and they can merge together to form larger areas. And they can be itchy. There are many reasons for hives, but occasionally viruses can cause hives. Let's discuss two very common viruses that have associated viral exanthems. So let's test your knowledge. Here are pictures of various rashes. Which one is fifth disease? It is B. Fifth disease is also called slap cheek or parvovirus B19. These terms are often used interchangeably. To be clear, the virus is parvovirus B19. Slap cheek is the common term because the rash appears on the child's cheeks like they were slapped. And fifth disease is a term to describe the fifth common viral exanthem. Thanks to vaccination, these common exanthems have changed, but the terminology is still used. The common viral exanthems, historically, are as follows. Like I mentioned, the most notable symptom of fifth disease is the bright red rash on the cheeks that make it look like the child had been slapped, hence the nickname. Other symptoms include a mild fever, runny nose, headache, fatigue, and muscle aches. After the cheek rash appears, a lacy pink rash may spread to the arms, legs, and body. This rash can fade and reappear, especially with sunlight, heat, or exercise. It is not painful or itchy for most kids. Symptoms usually show up 4 to 14 days after being exposed to the virus, with the slap cheek rash showing up about 4 to 21 days after your child can get infected. For most children, fifth disease is mild and goes away on its own without any long-term problems. This is spread through respiratory droplets from coughs or sneezes and through contact with contaminated surfaces. The virus is most contagious before the rash appears. Once the rash is present, the child is typically no longer contagious. Most children who get fifth disease have really great outcomes and the virus is self-limiting, meaning it goes away on its own. Fever-reducing meds can help for discomfort with fever if it occurs. Zyrtec or calamine lotion can help if the rash is itchy. 
People who are pregnant and people with weakened immune systems or certain blood disorders like sickle cell disease or cancer are at higher risk for more severe complications related to parvovirus B19. If you are pregnant and have another child with parvovirus, speak to your clinician for guidance. Pregnant women who contract parvovirus can pass the virus to the fetus. This can lead to a serious condition called hydrops fatalis, where there is abnormal fluid buildup in the fetal tissues. This condition can be life-threatening and may require early delivery if severe, but it is extremely rare. As a pediatrician who worked full-time pregnant with both children and saw loads of sick kids with rashes, I would like to say I was never worried about this as I washed my hands, I wore a mask into sick visits, I was never exposed, but had I been, I would have discussed it with my OB, and I ask you to do the same. In those with sickle cell disease or weakened immune systems, parvovirus B19 can lead to an aplastic crisis. An aplastic crisis is when the virus affects the bone marrow and stops it from making red blood cells properly, especially in people who already have blood conditions. Diagnosis is often based on the characteristic rash and symptoms. If a child is very ill appearing, other blood tests may be done to confirm the diagnosis or other blood work to look for any underlying conditions. When you see a rash, your child is no longer contagious. They can return as long as they are comfortable and without a fever or any fever-reducing medicines for 24 hours. Another common viral illness that has an associated viral exanthem is sixth disease. Which of the following picture do you think looks like sixth disease? The answer is A. Sixth disease is also known as roseola and is caused by the human herpes virus 6 or HHV6 and is a common viral infection in young children typically between 6 months and 2 years old. Although it is usually caused by human herpes virus 6 or HHV6, it can sometimes be caused by human herpes virus 7. People hear herpes virus and automatically think genital herpes, but these are very different viruses, just classified into the same viral family. Similarly to fifth disease, sixth disease got its name from being sixth on the same historical list of common childhood exanthems. The main symptoms of roseola are a high fever, often over 102 and as high as 105 degrees Fahrenheit, that lasts for three to five days with irritability. Some children may have a mild cough or a very minor runny nose with the fever, while others may just have the high fever, confusing many parents. The classic symptom of roseola is the fever suddenly breaks and a pinkish red rash appears that starts on the face and or chest, back and belly and spreads to the arms and neck. The rash looks like small flat spots, sometimes with raised bumps. It is generally not itchy and usually fades within a few days. The amount of parents that come in that think I'm some sort of wizard to know exactly what the diagnosis is, is astounding. But this is a very common rash and viral exanthem that we see, so your pediatrician should know what it looks like. Roseola is spread through respiratory droplets and saliva, meaning that when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks, tiny droplets carrying the virus can be inhaled or come into contact with someone else. Close contact with saliva can also pass on the disease such as sharing cups, utensils, or toys that an infected child puts in their mouth. Children are most contagious during the fever stage, and once the fever breaks and the rash appears, they are no longer contagious, just like fifth disease. Roseola is generally mild and doesn't cause any serious complications as the rash and fever go away on their own. However, the high fever can sometimes cause febrile seizures in about 10 to 15 percent of kids. Febrile seizures are alarming, but generally are not harmful, especially febrile seizures associated with roseola. For more information on febrile seizures, see my YouTube video dedicated completely to this topic. As roseola is a virus, antibiotics won't help. The best approach to managing symptoms is to give fluids, use acetaminophen or ibuprofen for the discomfort associated with fever and rest. The fever will go away on its own after a few days and is not bothersome to the child. Commonly, parents often come in during the first three days when the child has a high fever and are subjected to urine studies and blood work thinking it may be a UTI. If your child is consolable, hydrated, interactive at baseline, a UTI is unlikely and you can monitor closely. I have commonly seen roseola mistaken for ear infections and UTI workups in those first few days of high fever when close monitoring can be better if the child looks well appearing for things like hydration status, irritability, breathing, and more things like in my fever YouTube video. When they are fever-free and fever-reducing med-free for 24 hours, they can return to school. With viral exanthems, including fifth and sixth disease, it is important to contact your child's clinician for the following reasons. If the fever lasts more than five days or they are irritable, dehydrated, having difficulty breathing, or inconsolable with any number of days of fever, make sure to watch this really important video for more. 
if your child experiences a febrile seizure, if the rash is getting worse, not improving, or bothering the child, if the rash looks unusual and you're not sure of the diagnosis, or if your child already has a weakened immune system. You know your child best, and if they seem extremely unwell, even though you feel like you have a diagnosis, you should also contact your child's clinician. Generally, viral exanthems look worse than what is actually going on inside of your child's body. The key is to understand that they are self-limiting and that they get better on their own, but to also know when to seek care. And I hope this video provided you with that key information. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up sign, share, and subscribe for more content tailored to help you understand your child's health, development, and behavior with confidence. Comment below with any questions, comments, or personal experiences with these viruses. I hope I brought more confidence into your parenting journey. Stay informed, stay empowered, and I'll see you all next time. Stay well.